five mistakes that everyone makes on their OSCP journey. Number one, we avoid version numbers. We get so into our recon and going through and looking at web applications, we sometimes forget to look at what versions are running on the web application. We can find maybe version numbers inside of our in-map scan and we get sucked into those and they're like, there's nothing there. So we move on and we begin to look at the web application and poke around. But sometimes the easiest thing to do is just to look at the version number of what is on the web page and see what programs are running number two. And this is the one I struggled with a lot when I first started out. I would skim when I would read. I would find something that looks like a vulnerable exploit that is gonna work on the machine or box or server that I'm currently working on and I would just skim through and read the blog post or skim through and read the exploit really quickly and then I would just think to myself, this is not going to work and when in fact, if I would have just taken my time and read through it and it may have taken 10, 15, 20 minutes to read through how the exploit works, this would have saved me hours and sometimes even days working on a specific vulnerability. My advice to you is don't skim. Read all the way how an exploit works if you think it's going to end up working for your vulnerable machine. And if it doesn't, hey, the time is not wasted. You will probably be able to use that information sometime in the future and maybe even that exact exploit on a machine in the future. So just read the entire exploit. And number three, you need to look sometimes five pages deep on Google. This is a mistake that I also made when I first started. Sometimes I'd look at the first page of Google and maybe a second page when looking for an exploit and think, okay, there's nothing here. And then I would just move on and look for something else. When in fact, maybe on the third or the fourth page, there was a blog post that would tell me how to get an exploit to work or even possibly how to modify an exploit in order to get it to work. So I might've found the exploit on page one, but on page four of Google search, it actually tells me how to modify or update the exploit to get it to work on the current machine that I'm working on. So sometimes you have to look five pages deep in Google and those crafty offensive security devs like to use vulnerabilities that that do run sometimes on the third or the fourth page in Google search. So when you're doing proving grounds or working on some kind of offensive security vulnerable machine, you may need to look several pages deep within Google to find the working exploit. Number four, and it is to use hack the box as well as proving grounds. Sometimes we just think, okay, I'm, I'm going for the OSCP. What I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna work on machines put out by offensive security. And this is not always the best case because offensive security has a goal of making you persevere through difficult tasks. They give you a machine, there's not a lot of information about the machine, there's no walkthroughs, and you have to struggle your way through. That is one of their learning objectives throughout the process of their course is for you to gain perseverance. But this can slow down your learning tremendously. And so Hack the Box, there's a ton of walkthroughs. And so one of the things you should do is go to Hack the Box, try doing the easy boxes, read the walkthroughs, read several different walkthroughs, and learn as much as you can as fast as you can, but also do proving grounds at the same time so that you gain that skill of persevering and working through difficult tasks. So that's why I say use both hack the box and proving grounds. What happens is sometimes people will gravitate to just one or the other. And if you can only afford one, I would say go with hack the box because you are going to learn more from hack the box because there is a ton of walkthroughs for you to read. One of the things that programmers do when they are learning to program Program is something called Code Wars. And in Code Wars, you can go and you can try to solve a problem. And if you can't, you can get a hint, but then you can read all of the different ways that other developers have solved a specific algorithm. And you can learn a ton just by reading the walkthroughs. And since offensive security doesn't provide you with a bunch of different walkthroughs and you're not allowed to make walkthroughs of their videos, I would say Hack the Box is the number one place to go. But for the sake of perseverance, Proving Grounds is also a great place to learn self-reliance. If you are enjoying this video, please do me a favor and tap that like button as we continue. And number five, this is practice modifying exploits. If you're going specifically for the OSCP, one of the things they want you to know how to do is modify exploits. If you've done a lot of proving grounds, then you will know they want you to be able to modify exploits. So get 
used to reading completely through exploits and then seeing if there's anything to change or update in order to get your exploit to work on your current vulnerable machine. Sometimes you will have to take two different exploits and cobble them together in order to get one exploit that is going to work for your vulnerable system. So you may be thinking, I don't know how to read through the exploits. I don't understand the code and that's okay. Do your best to read the comments that are in the code to help direct you as the reader on how to modify it and then maybe just learn the bare basics of what functions are and how for loops run, while loops run, and then variable naming systems. And you'll be able to read through most exploits and understand what is going on. The programming language won't really matter too much as long as you have those core foundations. So those are my five tips on practicing for the OSCP. And if you want to continue practicing for the OSCP, specifically in Active Directory, you can click this video right here. And that is a video to help walk you through and practice Active Directory.